But I mean, who else would I rather have? You know, I do. I do good for myself. But yeah, you can you, al- you can always have help. You understand? Yeah. I'm never too good for help. You know, people be coming to me. They like, hey, I got some, I got some ideas for yo for whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be like, tell me, don't mean I'm gonna use it. Yeah. But I may take it into consideration. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, this may seem simple, but you be having so many people at your shows, you can't really do one line like that. One line? Yeah. What they mean? They like you need two lines. Oh, two lines as far as getting in. You're right. Yeah. They're like, man, listen, man, you got too many people at your shows, man. Yeah. You got need two people checking them in. Exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So did you follow that the next time or that was the last show you did? I mean, that's at every show, Mm -hmm. but the dynamics of the venue was different. Okay. So you got this new venue that I was at um, over there. I ain't going to say their name because it was all over the Internet. You okay. Know, they was like, hey, sir. They was emailing me. It's like, we got videos and stuff like that. Of, uh, of the show? Yeah. Oh, shoot. They was like, you need to let people. I was like, I was like, I never said. I said, I never said the name of the venue, you mm-hmm. know, because it was a last minute switch. You feel me? I was like, I never said the name of the venue because that was our agreement. It's like, you can do it here. Just don't say our name. Cool. Mm-hmm. I was like, but everybody was there. They know where it was at. They was they the ones saying that on the internet. I don't see why they don't want their venue name used. I mean, especially if it's like a popular event like that where to bring lots of people. It shouldn't matter what type yeah. of event you're having. Well, see, the thing, yeah, you know, but you got some people that like, because, because of the type of event it is, mm-hmm. you know, it can be a little hard to find venues sometimes. You know, they'll be like, well, how many people you bring it? I said, I'm going to pack. I'm just like, I'm like, how many people this whole? All right, I'm going to pack it out. Yeah, and they'd be like, "Oh, great! Yeah, come on through." And then I tell them what it is. And they like, "Wait a minute! I gotta check with the higher ups to see if we can do that." Well, the thing I don't see. Okay, I I just look at it as like, okay, you you still getting your money. You still right. bring a lot of people to the venue. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a, how and it's does a, it affect? And it's an event space. It's an event space, so anybody can book it for whatever they want to book it for. Right. So it's like. Yeah, I'm booking it for this, but I don't see why I would prevent other people from wanting to book your spot too. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. People people be scared. You know, some businesses don't want to be associated with the hottest, wildest, craziest, <laughs> you know, ladies only male reviews in the state of Indiana. Yeah. I wonder if would it be different if it was a woman's review? Like ladies instead. See, this is the thing. Mm-hmm. You mean like you mean ladies, or do you mean um, lesbian ladies? You know, I never even thought considered the other one, but I mean, because if we talking, regular I'm talking ladies, about regular ladies. Like, I feel like if it was regular ladies, it wouldn't be taken into account as much. I mean, maybe just because you know it's nudity, but not like because they feel like it's really raunchy and they don't want people looking at it bad. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like male reviews. You know what I'm saying? Ladies only male reviews. It's still looked at as ta- taboo, like taboo in a way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if it's just regular ladies, that's just like a regular strip club to me. Yeah, I wouldn't even people people didn't told me like, hey, go get some regular strippers. I was like, for what? Right. I don't I don't feel I don't really see the point in that for the type of events that I do because. Anybody, you go to the strip club seven days a week. Yeah. We can get up right now and go to the strip club. Yeah. Throw some dollars. And what makes yours so, like, such a big event is because you don't have many people. You don't, we don't have male strippers out here. So, right. yeah, it's like it attracts a lot of women. Yeah. Because <laughs> women like to go to the strip club too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And our only options are the women's strip clubs, which, you know, granted, if I go to the women's strip club, it's it's a cool time. But, you know, it'd be nice to go to a male strip club too. No. And mm. you ain't never been to none of my shows. I haven't. You know what I'm saying? You need to host it's, another one. You, <laughs> you, you holding it, back. It's disrespectful. <laughs> what? You know what I'm saying? I just found out about it. Somebody, exactly. It's all, it's all over the state. And you talking about you just found out about it. That mean you ain't paying attention. That mean that I've mean been cooped attention. up. I've been going to work you at need to home. Get out more. <laughs> I do need to get out more. Because I'm contem- right now I'm contemplating. I'm like, 
should I throw another climax mm-hmm. or should I throw a comedy show? Why not both? You know what I'm saying? Why people keep well, which one I'm gonna throw first? Right. I mean, does it really matter? Yes. Why? Because strategies matter when you're doing events and you're selling out events. It's a lot of stuff that you gotta take into consideration. See, some people just get out here and they just throw events and then they got 10 people that show up to their show mm-hmm. and now they mad and then they getting on Facebook bitching and crying. I say throw the throw the oh. review first because it'll get all the hype going, you know, the buzz going around and then when you throw the comedy show out there, it's, the buzz will still be buzzing, you know? And they'll be like, no, oh, let me go to the... You know, that review was so... That was... Okay, let me ask you this. Uh-huh. You know, as a woman, right? If you was going to two shows in one night and your girls was like, yo, we about to go out to the climax mm-hmm. to see some sh- male strippers mm-hmm. or we about to go to the comedy club, right? Which one would you go male to strippers. first? Which one would you go to first? First? Yeah, like, would, wouldn't you want to end your night with the male strip? That seems like something to end your night on. I, but you're talking about strategy like it won't be on the same day you're this it differs if you're talking about the same day in comparison to like these are i don't know how many days apart because right. if it's the same day yeah i would want to go to the comedy show first and then go to the strip up, right? up later that night yeah so even if they on different days wouldn't it make sense to do the comedy show loose up then come back with no, the climax no because <laughs> You didn't like the answer. Your face <laughs> dropped. <laughs> but no, I I feel like it would be better to do the the stripper show first, just because it uh, you know it brings attention. It already brings attention. So once you have that hype going for that, mm-hmm. everybody gonna be talking about it. So All as right. soon as you drop your next event, it's gonna be like everybody already still talking about that. They like you know he throw dope events already. Let me go to this comedy show. All right, people, I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and um, throw Climax. I'm going to throw another Climax, all right? Um, I just got to um, get the dancers or who I want to be on this particular Climax. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So y'all can go ahead and thank her. That I haven't been, even though I haven't been to any of them I know, yet. yeah. But I'm going to go to the next one. You don't come to the next one? You got to throw it when I'm here. Well, next time you're going to be here. No, uh, September, November, November. Yeah, you ain't coming back in September. No, well, November. So how far is long? What's for Thanksgiving? Uh, no. Well, my contract ends mid November. Okay, but so, you can visit. But you can visit before your contracts end. Though. I can visit. Yeah, you know? it's not that far. Because I think if I throw another climax, I'm thinking I know about when I want to throw it. But when? it's a pop. I can't. I can't be saying all that. You why? Okay, because then they because people be not. I be. Okay. They they don't know until the flyer drops. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They be like, when the climax? I be like, when the flyer drop? Okay. Tell me no. I mean, but I, mean, I I don't get it though. Why is it like it's you you lose anticipation when you know the date? Okay. It's not as exciting. Okay. If I tell you climax is gonna be on this day, mm-hmm. then when it you're not gonna be as excited. Well, you're, you're not saying the exact day. You're saying it could possibly be I mean, in this month. I mean, even if you give, but if I tell them the month, they gonna know. They gonna know when. You understand? Okay. Well, you know. You're just being difficult. It's not being difficult. It's being difficult. It's kind of like when you overthinking it. You ever, you ever, you ever get something new? Right, uh-huh. but you tell somebody first, so when you see them, they're like, "Oh, that's what's up, that's dope." But then if you just pull up in it, they're like, like, "Oh what? shit!" Okay, okay, I, I can get that. You feel me? I can get that. That's what I do with my flyers. It's like you don't know when it's coming. You don't know the. It's my. It's like Armageddon. You don't know the time, <laughs> the date, <laughs> anything. It's just gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I feel you. Okay, it makes sense when you put it like that. It makes sense. Yeah, so it's going to be a dope show. I'm going to have some great dancers like I always do. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all know how I get down. The ladies in the city know how I get down. I know. When they we know. was at the um, ladies shouting like, when you going to have the next? Uh, when I, you got gonna... cu- <laughs> I got cussed out like six times that night. Really? Yeah. I got the second I was walking to the venue, I got cussed out. I got in the venue, I got cussed out. 
I was in line, you know, getting a drink. Get them what they want. Got cussed out. Get Walking to my seat, them. got cussed out. And of course, you know, leaving. Got cussed out. That's you know the one I seen. <laughs> they said, yo. Yeah, I'm gonna get, listen. I'm gonna stop playing. I'm I'm, I'm done playing. Give with y'all. them what they I'm want. About to. Like you just got everybody just sitting waiting. The, <laughs> the second that the second that this podcast ends, I'm on it. Mm, the, I'm second. On the, the second that this ends, that's what I'm doing. All right, I'm booking the show. I'm a I'm a bear I'm witness the, to this. I'm, I'm calling the venue. As soon as I'm you cut it off, show. I'm be like, you getting it together? <laughs> I'm getting it together now. That had nothing to do with what this show is about today. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a laugh for me. Okay. I'm just saying that ain't had nothing to do with what we had today. But today, what we're going to be talking about, just to have a good conversation, and hopefully y'all join the conversation <laughs> by leaving some comments and everything like that. We're going to be talking about things that people go through that affects their relationships in life. We're going to talk about being for the so-called streets. We're going to be talking about do body count affect relationships between men and women? Like, do my body count matter? Do a woman body count matter? We're going to be talking about all that. We gonna be, And we also, you know what? We also going to be talking about the music today and how the music, do you think the music actually play a role in, you know, people being quote unquote for the streets? Definitely. Saying, <laughs> tell Steve Harvey I don't want to listen. Hey, I just heard that line the other day. I was mm-hmm. like, dang, he really said that. Yeah, he really said. <laughs> oh, you thought people was making it up? No, I just I I didn't know he said that. Mm-hmm. I actually listened to the song for Dude. the first time and heard that line. I was like, dang, why he come at her like or come at well come at her to Steve Harvey like that? That's what he was saying. You know, tell Steve I don't want to. Mm-hmm. You know, say so you may be Lori Harvey, you may be fine. You know what I'm saying? Um, Did from, Steve Harvey say something about um, her dating future? You know what? I don't remember. Me either. I know he said something about the Michael B. Jordan situation. Which that was, uh, you know, I, what was it? Just like, I hope he treat her, you know, right or something like that. I'm talking about after it was over. Okay. You know, he took, he took, he took her side, which is what you're supposed. I mean, that's his stepdaughter. You understand what I'm saying? I never really get mad. See. It's a difference. Like when you got family members and stuff involved, mm-hmm. I don't even be looking at them like really crazy like that. Cause it's like, no matter what somebody does, they're going to take up for them. Yeah. And that's how most people is. They may take up for you in public and be like, yeah, say all the right things in public behind closed door. They'd be like, you yeah. know, you wrong as hell. That's just like in relationships and stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to dare try and like, if I'm with somebody and you know, we having a conversation, I won't disagree in front of everybody. Cause I don't know. I feel like that make us look bad. It does. <laughs> As a couple, I was like, but I'll Y'all tell you. Y'all need to be on the same page. Yeah, we got to be on the same. We're, we're a people. unit. Exactly. Yeah. But because you, you look real divided when you, you're going against each other in public. But when it comes back behind closed doors, I'm like, yeah, you know, this is, this is. But yeah, it makes a difference. Like, you know, you was dead ass wrong was, out was there. Wrong. You was, <laughs> but I was, you know, I was backing you up, though. I yeah. was like, Ooh. You went a little too far. I was like, "Ooh, time to go." Yeah, and we might be able to like bring it like the topic again, kind of like mm. in front of people. Like, yeah, now we're on the same page, or you know, maybe our perspective changed, but we talked about it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe that that'll make a difference. You know, and also you gotta be on the same page in front of people because when you're not, that's when people start plotting. Yes, they they start seeing the kinks in your armor. Mm-hmm. They be like, oh yeah, nigga, she going, nigga. Yeah. Or, yeah. I don't never want nobody to see me in my relationship, and they like, um, they not, they not on a unit. They not. I be trying. Know, to, we could tear that up easily. <laughs> I've been trying to. I be trying to explain that to people like throughout my whole life, right? Mm-hmm. You know, throughout my, we all didn't have multiple relationships at this point, you know. And I be telling everybody I'm in relationship with, I'm like, everything ain't for everybody. Right. You understand know what I'm saying? Everything ain't for everybody, and a lot of a lot of people don't don't see that. Mm-hmm. And then you wonder why you got everybody in your ear talking shit. Hey, you need to leave that bitch alone because you up here 
running your mouth to everybody mm-hmm. and they only hear the bad stuff yeah you know what i'm saying the stuff the stuff that's bad the stuff you over exaggerating and once you over it they still like and you try to be like yeah i'm still with them or whatever you ain't you ain't talk about the good conversations y'all mm-hmm. had like the good date nights the good days it's just they are lingering on the bad stuff that you told them so they're right. like what the hell is wrong with you like, you're <laughs> stupid yeah you know what I'm so you definitely got to keep people out your business that's free tie game for you mm. now this whole thing of being for the streets you, you i'm sure you heard about that right yeah what's your what's your perspective on when somebody say whether if it's a male they talking about or whether if it's a female they talking about like what is your perspective on that being for the streets what that mean to you being for the streets yeah. that mean it sounds like almost anybody can have you like i mean not anybody I, even if you for the streets i guess you can still be picky but to me it just mean you for the streets you 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 out there you you know you here you at one home and and lay your head in another home right <laughs> you know so you bed hopping. So you're you, really not, you know, tied to anybody. So can you, okay, that's what I was about to say. Can you be for the streets if you're single? Can you be for the streets if you're single? Are you saying just being single makes you for the streets? No, no, no. I'm saying like, is it the same thing as if I'm in a relationship, right? Yeah. And I'm out here messing with every woman in some leggings the street. i see okay but if i'm single and i ain't got nobody and i ain't got no commitment to nobody am i'm still for the streets mm. since i ain't got no commitment to nobody am i'm still for the streets because everybody on here know i like leggings i love leggings i love I a mean, woman in some leggings i go to the gym i'll be at la fitness it'd be all types of women up there in some leggings now i'm I up for the now i'm <laughs> up for the streets if i'm single and i'm talking yeah. I would say if you're talking to multiple, mul- yeah, multiple, mul- I can't even talk, multiple women, maybe, okay, I, now I'm, I'm messing my own <laughs> stuff up because I feel like if you're for the streets, that means you're just, you know, talking to multiple people and you just, you know. Okay, are we, are we saying know, talking to multiple people or sleeping with multiple people? Sleeping. I want to be very clear. We're, okay, we're talking sleeping. Okay. Sleeping because when I think if I'm in a relationship and my man just you know sleeping with other people, that's when I feel like he for the streets. Okay. Now if he you know not sleeping with people, maybe he's just flirty or something, or mm-hmm. just I don't know, doing a little bit too much texting. I don't really consider that for the streets. He just mm-hmm. doing too much. Is that that's doing too much? Is that disrespectful? It is disrespectful, is and it, it is a form of cheating. But I don't I won't say he for the streets because I feel like we can fix that. <laughs> Okay, you feel like we can fix it? I feel like that's cheating too. It if, is. I, if I catch my woman texting another nigga, I love, I'm like, you hear that little Dirk song where he's like, I don't give a fuck if you're a fan. We don't like the nigga. Then they, you know they, they possibly for the streets. They just ain't been in the streets yet. They got for the street ambitions. That's what I think. Yes. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> they have ambitions to be out here for the streets. Because it's like, why are you up here? texting other people and you in a full-blown relationship Mm -hmm. or full-blown marriage or anything like that yeah Uh, okay well if you're single i would say yeah you can i would say you can be for the streets if you're single okay Mm -hmm. now as a woman uh, a man being for the streets all right Mm -hmm. right now we talking about a man being for the streets right Mm -hmm. is that going to change the way you look at him or would you have the mindset of, well, he is single. Maybe he don't act like that if he's in an actual relationship. Okay. I will say if he's single and I'm, I'm trying to date him or whatever and he he's out here willy-nilly or whatever, I feel like he's only for the streets if he has no, like, like any standards. Like, he's just out here. What, what, like what's, who, what standards? I mean, what's your like whoever can have them? Like it's mm. like, but that's how a lot of men are though. Like maybe, a lot of men don't really like men can have sex with somebody and 
And it no means, ties or It anything. means absolutely nothing. I keep hearing that. You was just at the right place at the right time. Probably, I maybe I looked at you at the right angle. Maybe you just had the right pair of leggings on that day. Now, even though that's the case with a lot of men, I, I do actually have standards. Uh-huh. You know, for the most part, at this point in my life, I'd be like, if something was to happen, how would I feel about that? Will I be okay about that? All right. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how that's kind of how I look at it. Even if it's something totally out the, you know, and now I'm much later, eh, eh, like, will I be okay with that? If the answer is no, I can't. I can't fuck with you, regardless of how good your leggings may look. You know, I heard somebody say the other day, uh, the only thing that makes a difference between whether a man has sex with you or not was him choosing between his hand and whatever toy he got laying <laughs> around or something. But I was like, that, you know, it, it's crazy to me. Because man, man, man do have sex toys, people. Yeah. We don't want you out there to think yeah, that it's ring. just women. Man, they got all types of shit, man. The Got Guac 3000. Yeah, I just seen that. It was mm-hmm. another toy I just seen. I was like, that, you know, that looked like a good toy for him. I would give my man that you when I'm get, not around. You don't get your man that so he won't cheat. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I would hope he would, you know, have the willpower not to cheat anyway. But right. I'm like, shit, maybe that'll help. Maybe that'll help. Maybe that'll help. Be like, baby, you, um, I ain't gonna be able to be in town tonight, but go ahead. I got you a little present, so yeah. you won't be out there at the club looking at everybody that passed you. But you can Facetime me. Oh, so you? Oh, so okay. That's some freaky shit, right <laughs> there. Like, you walk up. <laughs> turn into yeah, some phone sex or something. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's right, baby. Use that toy. Yeah, I used to, I I used to like phone sex. I ain't done it in a while, but yeah. You know what? It can def- It makes a difference. You can get a my next woman, right? Mm-hmm. And this is some real shit. Like, I'm not joking. Anybody know me? Know I be saying some crazy ish and be dead serious. My next woman, I'm gonna have her get like a mold, like the um, like the porno stars. Like you ever go to the sex toy store and they got like they ass and stuff like that. that you ain't gonna get a mold of your dick. No, 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 no. I'm gonna get a mold of her pussy. Okay. I mean, she get a mold of me too, but yeah. I'm saying I'm gonna get a mold of her ass and pussy and shit. So when she gone, you use that. I'm gonna use that. That's okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why, like, even though it's a toy, it's still you. Now, question. Yeah, How? How is this mold going to work? Because, like, how is the fluid or whatever they use going to go into the hole? Of, how it's, are they going to make this mold? Well, you know, I, it's like they put, like, some plaster or something on, on you. On you, right. Yeah. But now... And then it molds to you, and then... How are they going to mold the inside? Because I would want the in the the part where you go in to be like me too. You know what? That's mm. a, you know what? That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they mold the inside of them or if they just put, you know, fake ridges and stuff like that. Okay. I have no idea. Yeah. I was like, we got to figure that out. So you like, you like, you, you it better me. feel <laughs> like me too. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I feel you on that. Yeah. I definitely, definitely going to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I may do it on like her birthday or something like that. Oh yeah, that would yeah. be cool. But like, I got something for you. Come on, we about to go to the store. Wait, now how is it for her if it's for you? It would be more so a gift for you from her. A mold of her vagina. That's true. Yeah. Okay. But we can still go get it on her birthday. <laughs> Matter of fact, it ain't gotta be nobody's birthday. I Anniversary. Could just be like, that'll be dope. Mm-hmm. Be like, come on, baby, let's, you know, you be gone all the time. You always traveling. I'm always traveling. Mm-hmm. You know, I just need to put this in my suitcase. Yeah. You know, TSA going to be looking at it like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, all right, sir. <laughs> my ass. I'll be playing with both of ours. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, put the camera on there. <laughs> but yeah, so. I think I only fans for our modes. You gonna make OnlyFans for our mo our mo. You gonna make you gonna make OnlyFans yeah, for the mo. Yeah, people will watch stupid stuff like that. I'll put be a multi-millionaire like it's just sex toys on yeah, there. Yeah, I put some syrup and honey and just make noise. It'll be an ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> be like put your headphones on yeah. to listen to this. Yes. How would it, so how would it sound? I, I, I can't do it right now. Yes, you can. <laughs> you 
nibbling on something? Like, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I can't mimic the sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you gonna do that? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I won't have to do it. I'll have honey and, you know, different things to use to make the sounds. It'll make its own sounds. What is it? Hold on. What is it? What are you seeing? Oh. Uh, I was like, <laughs> what is this in the picture? I'm surprised you even seen that. I couldn't figure it out. Let me put my glasses back on. I did not see that. I didn't see it neither. And I got perfect vision. I got 2020 vision. Mm. Uh, no, actually, I got. I think I got fifteen twenty vision. This is that's even better. Yeah, dang. But so back to the streets, right? Back to the streets. How you feel that that affect women who's for the streets? Because it seems it seems like, and it is. You know, if we're gonna be honest, it affects women a lot worse being for the streets than it do for the man. Mm, I feel like it only affects people in a negative way if you're not both on the same page. Like explain, if you if you're if you're both for the streets, the only way like a person to get upset or feel some type of way about the other person being for the streets is if they're looking for something more, or they you know end up catching feelings. So mm-hmm. so so can women really be for the streets? Yes, women can be for the streets. It's all types of women out here that's for the streets. I know them personally. Mm-hmm. There's lots of women for the streets. And it is going to be looked at different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You for the Why? streets. How yeah. you know all these women for the streets? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have conversations with people. Conversations? Yes, you know, just regular. Nah, just regular <laughs> conversations with people, you know? Yeah. But a lot of people that's for the streets don't think they for the streets. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They think they just, what, dating? or Yeah, they, well, that, they consider it dating. But it's really just messing around. Yeah, like what, whatever excuse they have, it's a, it's a lot of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, some people read more into stuff. Like, you know, they'll start talking to somebody, hanging out with somebody with no, nobody really gave them the impression like, yeah, we're going to be a, a thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, they probably already had sex with them and they're thinking like, okay, it'll grow on some more. But we never, I never gave you the impression like, oh, you know, we're going to be more than what this is. Right. So... That's the reason, but that's how you know being for the streets can be a problem, mm-hmm. can be an issue. I think I think it's like, and I think this it it, it works more against women than men, right? Yeah. Like you'll have a man that'll be dealing with a woman, really like her, want to be with her, etc., and be like, oh, that looks like wifey, because mm-hmm. a lot of men already like had this predetermined thing, like. And I heard when I mean women does it too, but they're mm-hmm. like, okay, you know what? I think I can be with her. Yeah. You know what? I think she may be wifey. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just gonna smash her. Mm-hmm. But if a dude has in your his head like, I'm you know I'm gonna be with her. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make her my woman, etc. Mm-hmm. And then he finds out she for the streets, even if they're not together. I might have been for the streets. <laughs> even if it's not, even if they're not together yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? His, his whole mind shift changes right yeah and i'd be like talking to like a lot of my female friends and they'd be like you know things are going great and then he just he just did that and i said he found out that you was for the streets mm. so his mindset from you know what i can make her my woman or i can make her a potential wife change so since he seen you was for the streets mm-hmm. he said i'm gonna treat her like she for, for the, the streets that makes sense you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now women be on some whole different stuff. They be like, yeah, he for the streets. But it's cool. Yeah. But they want to try and take him out the streets. Yeah. They be wanting to take him out the streets. Yeah. Y'all, y'all didn't have no good role models growing up. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I would say like male figures in your life and different things. Like, I don't know. If you, you've you never been shown how like a man's supposed to treat you, then right. it's like, oh, well. You know, I'm gonna go for like the man who really ain't really putting in no effort or, or anything. So, Project Pat told us a long time ago, don't save her. Don't save hoes. She don't want to be saved. Oh, <laughs> Snoop Dogg told us, don't save. Her. Y'all ain't really have nobody like that growing up. Speaking of y'all, but you did yeah. say something interesting though, no. right? You was like, ain't really got no male role models. Mm-hmm. Probably ain't got no fathers. Mm-hmm. Which is why having fathers is very important 
you definitely want to make sure that you're getting pregnant. Like even, you know, I, I do feel like you have a better chance of having your father around if you actually marry the person that you're having a kid with. Yeah. But even if you don't marry a person you have a kid with, a lot of these men shows. I, I just feel like, you know, if this dude going to take care of his kids or not. Yeah. Like, you know, like even if y'all not married, it's like, OK, do he have kids already to take care of them? Oh, he got five kids mm -hmm. and he don't take care of them. Why is he going to take care of my Look, I, I know some people where they actually they were they talked to this man, had a kid by him for like years and never contacted them or tried to be involved in a child's life and then end up trying a relationship with them after several years. Did it work out? No. <laughs> and he still wasn't trying to be in the, you know, child's life or anything, even while you're with the person. All right. That's crazy. Yeah. It, it's like, it's like, why would you think you could do that? I think you definitely, <laughs> I think you definitely got to look at that. And that's like with dudes too. Like, do you think she going to be a good mother? Do she show that she's going to be a good mother yeah. or do she already got kids and she's like leaving her one year old by themselves because yeah. they sleep to go to the club. And yeah. if the house burned down, ain't nobody going to be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So speak about how important it is to have like the fathers in your life, the role models or even the role models because everybody ain't got their dad. Some of them passed away. Yeah. Some of them may be locked up, but you may have a good role model in your life as well. I would say, oh, that's kind of hard because I, I never really, I mean, my dad was in my life, um, but I never had like a man in my life where I could look at and be like, oh, you know, that's how you're supposed to, you know, treat a woman. I mean, not in my close perimeter because I do have a big family like on my mom's side, but you know, those aren't people that I've seen every day. Mm -hmm. Um so none of them gave you no none of them gave you no game nobody uh, gave me any game I, I just let you <laughs> i just i had to figure it out on my own um as like as far as my dad like he was you know he was present you know we were all in the same household but you know it was my mom taking care of us for the most part mm -hmm. as far as i was you know with with me being born and now my dad would say like before then, you know, he was taking care of stuff and, you know, stuff happened, mm -hmm. but I wasn't present then, right. as far as I know. So you're only going off what you're saying. Yeah, all I know is my mom was taking care of everything. So, and I would say, like, as far as, like, relationships and me dating, I would, like, you know, I would feel okay, you know, giving to a man before he really even gave, shown me anything, you know? Right. So, it, was, I, I, it definitely plays a huge part, and I, I didn't really get to see anything. My my dad would be asking me for money, and it's, I was still a kid at the time. <laughs> and like Why'd between dad, between my dad and dad my brother. Me for money? Uh, well, he you know he was had a drug issue and everything, oh, and okay. he wasn't really working much back then either. So it was like you know in order for him to maintain his habits and just different things, whether it was like stealing from the house or um, just. So he was stealing from the house? Stealing from the house, pawning different things. I mean, I had like a whole Wii system and all that stuff just started disappearing. I had the guitar, the guitars, guitar, the, the guitar drum girl. set. Yeah, yeah, I had the whole thing. Um, yeah, he pawned it. Yeah, the games, different games and stuff was just gone. What type of drugs was your dad on? Sound like some hard, that's some hard drugs if he doing all that. Yeah, uh, he was on heroin. Um, okay. But he eventually got off of that. But in order to wing people from heroin, if you're going to the clinics, they wing you off with um, methamphetamine. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess a less harsh of a drug. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's he had to maintain that habit. But so, so how long was he on that before he started getting the you know the help he needed to get off of it? Ooh, I would say, you know, I really don't know from what I. What I understand, um, a little bit after my mom and him started dating, um, which was shoot, back when my brother was born, 1983, a little bit before that, he started getting on drugs, probably like 1990, I would say. So, I, he was on there for a while, then he started, I know when I was younger, probably like seven years old, he ended up staying with my auntie um, in Columbus, and he was going to rehab and different things out there. Yeah. Um, but 
I can't say for certain when he got back on it, or even if he did, but I know it was a certain point, like when I was going through high school, um, middle school, high school, where, you know, his temper would just kind of be sporadic. He would be violent, cursing a lot, just, mm-hmm. you know, angry. Um, you were singing all that growing up. Yeah, I seen all that growing up. Or, like, you know, sometimes he would just be, you know, He'll be home, but, like, just standing in the corner, kind of falling asleep at the wall, like, you know, for certain reasons. So, it's like, I don't, I didn't see him do it. I never seen him do it, but, like, it's like I know that's not just no regular drugs that got you falling asleep at, standing up at the wall, you know? So, yeah, yeah. So, how did, as you said, you know... You had your dad dad around, but I guess that wasn't a a good example, right? Yeah. So like how was he treating your mom and did the way that he treats your mom kind of make you feel like, okay, well this is how man is supposed to treat me because that's how my mom husband is treating her. So this must be how it is. What's crazy is I never looked at it as like, oh, this is you know how a man's supposed to treat a woman. I always saw like a issue with it. Mm-hmm. I just never, as I got older, really thought that I would be, you know, falling into the same ways. It's like you kind of just go through life and, mm-hmm. you know, you see what you're willing to put up with. But the way he treated my mom, it, it would just be a lot of arguing. Um, a lot of arguing would be due to like them like physical altercations between like my brother and sister and him and mm. and just like him just being walking in angry for whatever reason um him not really wanting my mom to go out like that my mom come from like a party inside of the family like they like to drink play cards hang out and different things but um he really didn't like being around people like that let alone my mom's side of the family so so, it's like they would so get the two sides of the family had beef. Yeah, well, my, I don't know my dad's side of the family <laughs> like that, and they weren't around physically like that. So okay. it wasn't two sides, just more so, you know, my dad against my mom's side. So I'm gonna tell y'all something real quick. Yeah, hold, hold on one okay. second. Hold on one second. <laughs> it's very. It's listen, me. I have I have a strong personality, so I don't if I like you. Then I like you, right? I, I don't care who don't like you. I don't care if who's in my who if who in my family don't like you. If I'm rocking with you, I'm rocking with you. But I do know a lot of people get torn apart due to having issues with the other side of the family. Yeah. If you got too many issues with the other side of the family, especially if the other side of the family, because you got you got a certain type of family. You got family that like to put their nose in everything, mm-hmm. and then you got family that don't like you, but they kind of just let you be, you. Let, just let you do you. You know, they ain't all in your business, but you know, y'all don't really like each other. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But when you got those family members that's just always up and stuff, and then be trying to run stuff and trying to run Ooh. different households and gossip. It, exactly. Like I got a it big family, and gossiping mm-hmm. is a nobody can yeah. hold water. <laughs> if your if your partner is not strong mentally because one of the worst one of the worst things that you can have while you're in a relationship is have somebody that your partner love and trust and then grew up with you know what i'm saying telling them how you ain't shit because they're gonna listen Mm -hmm. you know because that's like they sister or they best friend or something and it's like you know or you know fellas we do that too like homeboy will be like oh nah nigga she did what nah nah you need to get rid of her you know what I'm saying she definitely for the streets like what yeah. chick what chick got three cell phones you know what I'm saying she and either I, a brain surgeon or a hoe I'll say that really I think that really affected my dad's uh, drug habit too I won't say like you know like one of the main things but I, I don't think it made it any better like mm-hmm. him having to go against my mom's family and everything and you know them putting words in their ear or you know just it, it didn't help <laughs> let me ask this did your mama have your dad back when the family went against him or was she jumping over on that side and it was like your dad was against his wife and her family from my understanding you know my dad didn't feel like she had his back it was more so 
I mean, I, she wouldn't jump down his throat like in front of them or anything, but it wasn't like, you know, you would clearly, you know, have your man's back. You just kind of like let him deal with it on his own. So that ain't going to work. It ain't. No. It is not going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, that's not going to work. Yeah. Like we was talking about earlier. When we in front of people, we got to ride together. We got to die together. I'll cuss you out at home mm -hmm. to let you know what went what went wrong mm -hmm. and why we don't need to be doing this. But while we together, so that's just the type of person I am. Mm -hmm. I, I, let, I do not care. I ain't about to go against my woman. You know what I'm saying? If I ever get married again, I ain't about to go against my wife in yeah. front of nobody. Like one instance that he told me was where they had just got a new apartment and, you know, bought this new furniture and everything. And, you know, my mom had family over and they were like, I got, I don't know what they were doing, but they were skeeting. Okay. Maybe wrong words. <laughs> Throw it, you know, tossing okay. quarters across the table. But like, you know, they were doing something with the quarters across the table, some type of game or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it also put scratches in the table that he had. Mm -hmm. And so he came in when he got off. Uh, I think he said. I don't know if he got off work or he came from somewhere, but um, he saw that he was, he had an attitude and was angry mm -hmm. and, you know, he was cussing people out and, you know, my mom really didn't say much. It was just like, you know, like, oh, well, you know, he just looked like a bad person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it, it don't help at all. And, you know, I kind of look at things like now that I'm older, like, yeah, you know, I know my dad had his issues and everything, but now I start to kind of look like, mm, you know, I can see, you know, my mom wasn't perfect either. Right. So I can't really put blame wholeheartedly on him. I kind of look at him as human now. Like, yeah, you know, nobody's perfect. Yeah. I'm not even, I don't even look for perfection because you're not going to find it. Yeah. Like, no, I don't care. I don't care how much you like somebody. I don't care. I don't care about none of that. Nobody's going to be perfect. Yeah. You, know, you just got to hope that you can deal with whatever it is that you got to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You be like, dang, her pinky toe is bigger than her big toe. Dang. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, That's a, I don't know if I can look past <laughs> that. <laughs> like, let me see. How we going to deal with that? I mean, you know I mean, looking at your feet every five seconds, mm -hmm. it's like, mm -mm. So, uh, do you feel, okay, straight question yeah. honest answer mm -hmm. do you feel growing up when you said you know you didn't really know how to deal with men because you didn't have nobody do you feel you was nowadays it got a turn do you feel before it had a turn you was for the streets okay wait you before no i'm just saying because now I'm we call it for the streets back then they you know we wasn't saying it she for the streets back then you know what i'm saying yeah you know some people was for the streets before it actually had a turn before the streets that's like back in the day when nobody called dots that's like relatively new probably within like the last eight years or something like that people just start saying thoughts it's just new terminology so you saying if at, at any do i feel like i was for the streets at a point in time yeah by you saying you didn't have no type of role uh, models or anything like that i do feel like i do feel like Tell the truth. i was i do okay i was for the streets <laughs> okay <no>. once <laughs> upon a time um yeah i would say i won't say college because i really i didn't do a whole lot in college well okay maybe like towards the end of my mm -hmm. year. but i was i think it was more so out of boredom like rather than me like oh okay i did want a relationship too but and i i was kind of like coming out of like this long-term relationship mm -hmm. and i was like okay i've been dealing with this person and we were we were dating from a distance mm. so it was like hold on hold on before you go too far yeah do long distance relationships work for you or do you think they, the do you think only, they can work i feel like they can work but mm -hmm. i feel like it wasn't working with the person i was doing it with okay i, I was with him from i was in 10th grade he was a senior so you know after that year he's in college 
Me, I'm yeah. still trying to hold them down, and while I'm in high school, it's dumb as hell, <laughs> looking like a goofy. Oh, really? But um, my man being faithful to me, right. <laughs> college, so I'm yeah. Still here. yeah, okay. But it's like you know, sometimes he wouldn't return my phone calls and just mm -hmm. different things. So it was like, yeah, in high school, I started He's maybe getting that guac guac three thousand. You can't answer the <laughs> listen. You can't answer the phone when you get in the guac guac well, three thousand. Look, but at least you can return a phone <laughs> call after the guac guac. <laughs> yeah, yeah, try to play it off at least. Yeah. Oh, baby, I was late. Yeah. And so then when I got to um, college, well, yeah, when I stopped, when I finished school and I went to so neither one of us had cars at the time. So it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know why we were still holding on to this relationship because I would see him maybe like once every month, maybe a couple months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and just like communication wise, he wasn't keeping up like that. So it was, it wasn't very Let good. me tell y'all something. Yeah. When you're younger, now I, I, I feel a long distance relationship can work when you're older mm -hmm. because you're more mature. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You have more control over your urges. But if y'all, if anybody watching this and you in high school, Don't college, it, that, that long distance stuff is not about to work. Mm -mm. It is not. It's a 99.5% chance. That y'all up here calling other people, doing other people, because y'all don't see each other. Yeah. Y'all far away. Got urges like crazy because exactly. you're young. Hormones just. Like when you older, you could just be like, all right, I'm going to catch a flight down there. Would you, would you, will. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you young and you ain't got no money like that. I had to go catch the train. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you was catching trains out there, huh? Once the area. He was taking the bus. He was taking the Greyhound out here. <laughs> See, now they're going to say, if you want it to work, you just got to work for it. Yeah. All right, but go I ahead. I feel like with the right people, it will work. Mm -hmm. What was I saying? No, nah, you were just saying how you don't know why y'all was holding on to it. Yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. why we were holding on to it, but um, we, we kept maintaining it, and it just kept... He would want to... Because he wasn't communicating like that, and we would get into it, he would want to like be like, okay, well, let's take a break every time I had an issue. <laughs> And so we take a break, then the break end up turning into a long break, but yet we still doing relationship stuff, celebrating mm -hmm. birthdays and everything together, um, driving out or coming out to see each other, just different things. But eventually it was like, you know what? I can't be on a break for this much longer. Like obviously a break, your reason for being on a break is because you need to focus on like getting your uh, stuff together and being where you want to be but I feel like we should be able to focus on that stuff together mm -hmm. like I, I don't feel like if I'm a hindrance to you like being what you want to do like being what you want to be in life mm -hmm. maybe I'm not for you then because right. <laughs> I, I don't think I should be a hindrance to that you, feel like, together. I should be, you feel like I should be helping you get yeah. to where you're trying to get to okay. yeah mm -hmm. but if you have other plans you know it's like so so that situation is like right before you went into your for the streetness. Mm hmm. I mean, I would say during I was kind of, I was towards the end. I was going towards the streets. Just going towards the streets. I was probably in the streets because I was like, at this point, <laughs> fuck, we not even together. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I I was for the streets. You know, I met people, hung out people. Not at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm right. No, but I'm I'm just saying, like more than one person, you know, hanging out, meeting, and you know, one thing leads to another. You know, we had sex or whatever. So, um, yeah, I say I was for the streets. Okay, so well, at that point, would you just not? Um, looking for any type of relationship or would you like I just want to be able to deal with as many dudes I, as I can no it wasn't even like that I, I wasn't thinking like I want to deal with all these dudes mm -hmm. I truly wanted a relationship I wanted to be in one I just <sighs> my hormones because <laughs> <laughs> at the same in the same breath like I was I would say I was a really horny person <laughs> Okay, that's I'm one trying way to, to put it. Yeah, I was trying to figure another way to put it, but I was just like, my sex drive was very high. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I don't know, it was like once I let the relationship go completely, it was like, I kind of, I sat for a second and I was just bored. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, okay, I started entertaining, like, not whoever, but like, 
probably entertaining people that really didn't have no great intentions for me or anything. And, mm. But I kind of went along with it. But why though? I mean, if you if you as a woman already know this particular person don't have good intentions, like yeah. you know that already. What possesses you to still be like I'm still gonna you know deal with them anyway, even though I know they have no good intentions. They ain't good for me. Man, he was cute. Um, sex was really good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. And probably sex would probably keep me there longer than I should have. Mm-hmm. And just kind of like ignore all the red flags. Yeah, which is why I think now I kind of like try to hold off from sex mm-hmm. <laughs> um, before, like while dating somebody. Because it's like, I feel like you ignore so many things like after you have sex. It's like, you know, I mean, it's not that you ignore, you see the red flags, but it's mm-hmm. like, since we already doing it, I might as well just stay or whatever like that. No, it's like you become a dummy after the <laughs> sex. Because <laughs> it's like, I don't know, you become a dummy to the sex. Okay. And yeah, you just kind of put up with anything. Or not even, yeah, you put up with a lot of things and you let it go on for so long. I'm not saying that eventually you won't come to your senses, but it's just going to take you a while to get tired. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And how was this time in your life affecting your relate? Like, was it was it so bad to the point where it was effect, um, affecting your relationship with other people? I would say, um, mm, I, okay, I will say, I did end up getting into a relationship with somebody where the sex was good and they didn't have any like good intentions for me it was more so like using me um and i was really trying to like make that relationship work and i would say as far as like my friendships well one friendship in particular it was like you know she kind of felt like i was more focused on the relationship than you know trying to be a good friend Okay. Which I felt like I was a good friend. I just never was the type of person that liked to be on the phone all the time. Right. But I'm always there when you need me. You know, mm-hmm. you need money, you need rides, whatever. I got you. I'll, you know, I'll talk to you from time to time, but I'm not in your face 24 7. I know like some people, some uh, you know, yeah, some people need, uh, I guess, need that 24 7 ness. Like if they're your friend. Yeah, pop up anytime type yeah. thing. And, if I get into a relationship, like a lot of stuff with my friends, you know, it don't end, yeah. but it slow down. Yeah, and it slow down, and yeah. that's how I felt. I felt like I wasn't, I wasn't ignoring you. Like we still hung out, right. not as much because I like hanging out with my man. Exactly, exactly. You, you have know? a whole relationship over here. <laughs> yeah, people be getting jealous of your relationship. Like we don't hang out as much. Like yeah. I know, like I'm trying to build a family over here. Yeah, but I also feel like because I had another friend too, like she felt like that friend was taken away from her. But it was because I think because of the relationship I had with that friend, mm-hmm. because we were intimate, she felt like she. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Not- you ain't about to just <laughs> you ain't about to just slip that in there. <laughs> oh, well that well that changes everything. This is a, how this does is, it change this everything? Is, this is a different type of friend here. No, but it, it it's. <laughs> you said you was like yeah you know we've been intimate so so that's why she tripping. She like we more than friends. She probably now now she really jealous of your relationship. She, yeah. She probably wanted y'all to be in a relationship. That's what I wondered at one point because nah, it, it'll be certain times she'd be like, yeah, uh, she'll call me right after I get off work, like on the dot, and she'd be like, I'm like, dang, I just got off work. <laughs> she'd be like, yeah, I know your schedule, like I'm your boyfriend. I'm like, she like, cause okay. I want to be, cause that's what I want to be. <laughs> and I remember I had another my coworker and friend at the time. She was like. Uh, she kind of met her or we wasn't passing by and she was like afterwards dude like she want to fight or does she want to like fuck you or what is it because something ain't adding up was that before or after y'all was already intimate with my other friend yeah when she said don't she want to fight you or she want to fuck you i was like was that before or after this was after after, this was a while after because i hadn't i hadn't done anything with my other friend in a while once she started acting really strange Mm -hmm. so it was like so she so so she wait a minute she kind of so she was acting strange 
Yeah, my my long time friend. The one you was intimate with? No. No. Okay. My friend, my long time friend, was acting funny um, after knowing about my other friend that I was intimate with. Okay. And it was like I almost felt like yeah, she kind of wanted to be that person because it's like whether it's it was just like she was possessive of me, mm-hmm. like who I was dating and different things, which understandably as a friend, it's like, okay, yeah, you'd be to a certain extent, to a yeah. certain extent. All right. Um, but it was like, she didn't want me to have any other friends right. darn near. And I'm like, you got all these friends. I didn't met your friends, but she was rude to mine. <laughs> like she would, I literally, we had a sleepover type event and she would purposely call their names, a completely different name. Mm-hmm. Or butchered her name on purpose. After I told her when she initially butchered their name, like through text, I corrected her, and she did it in person. And I found out after, um, after the fact. But, but yeah, it's like she was doing it on purpose. Yeah, she wanted you. <laughs> she wanted you, and she was and then, mad that they had you. Yeah, and then afterwards, like, cause we we ended up like separating. She moved out of town with her boyfriend, and she. Um, was trying to contact me and keep meeting up different times. She kept changing it back and like backing it out. And then eventually she was like, um, I just want to meet in person so we can have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're all the way in. Mm-hmm. You can FaceTime me and we can talk over the phone. Why do we have to talk in person? Mm-hmm. At that point, I'm, I'm really thinking she, like, do you want to fuck or fight? Right. <laughs> she like, wanted to see you. <laughs> Yeah, it was just it was strange. So did you ever see her? No. No, you didn't. So you didn't let her come see you. No, I I let it go. I let it go because after that last time we were supposed to meet, uh, she didn't. We first off we changed the date like six different times. Mm. Every time that day came or whatever, she never said anything, and I wasn't. I didn't feel like I was in the wrong, so I wasn't going to reach out. Right. Um, but I was. You know, I was responding to her when she did reach out, and then that last time. She didn't, you know, say anything after scheduling, you know, a day and time or whatever. And I was like, okay, her birthday passed. I didn't say happy birthday because I was still like. (laughs) (laughs) So literally that day after, (laughs) that day after she was like, okay, at this point, I don't think we're friends anymore. Blase, blase. And plus she she tried to call me soft and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I was just like, okay, like, I don't see how these different i don't know i didn't see where her anger was coming from Mm -hmm. because the way she was making it seem as if i wasn't a good friend or 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 something but i was like i've always been there for you whenever you needed anything from me i'm there Mm -hmm. i went out you know went out of town for your you know to support you and everything i you know i was i was there whenever you wanted to talk about something i'm there it's like so i just didn't understand so i just let it go let me ask you this so you said you was intimate with your other friend who was a female right Mm -hmm. what made you decide to start dibbling and dabbling with women yeah (laughs) well she's the only well okay wait wait. i was gonna say the only woman Uh, i know i know what you're she's the only woman i had sex with okay um okay so and this is part of your for the street Tour, right? Yeah, this is for the street because I was on tour. Tinder at the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, okay, my hormones was getting the best of me. Like, I feel like coming up, I kind of had like an attraction to women mm-hmm. um, somewhat. And I feel like at that point, when I came across her, it was like, that's when I really, really wanted to test the waters. My curiosity kind of like, Got, got the, the best, best of you. Yeah. So on Tinder, I was like, eh, I kind of want to like, you know, find like a girlfriend, not a girlfriend, mm-hmm. but a girlfriend that could, you know, possibly, you know, because <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't, even though I had friends of my own, I really didn't look at them that way. Right. You know, so I look at them as my friends. Was she a stud chick or was she like a feminine chick? Feminine. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't really attracted to um studs okay but um but yeah she um came across her on tinder and we ended up hanging out like as friends and everything 
<laughs> and then I'm yeah. just listening. Don't mind. Don't mind my facial expressions. No goodness. And then you know, um, one time she was hanging. Oh, why are you looking like that? One time she came over, and you know, one thing led to another. You know, we we intertwine and then scissor. <laughs> I mean, whatever that plus other stuff. Different. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. What sex with a woman, woman to woman is like. And so, yeah, that happened. And um, after that, you know, she ended up asking me to, like, be a part of, um, um, because she was in a relationship, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. But she asked me to be a part of that. And, yeah. So, I had threesome. Okay. Before... (laughs) Um, a lot of people have, okay. Yeah. A lot of people have had threesomes at this point in their life. Yeah, and yeah, I wasn't at a rela- in a relationship at the time, and I guess, yeah, I was, I was having fun, I was exploring, and I was getting freaky. I, I, oh, I, I was yeah, <laughs> you definitely was getting freaky. I know that. Yeah. Now. Was it now? Was it just your, you know, as you put it, your hormones, mm-hmm. or do you feel like you was missing something? Do you feel like you was trying to fill a void? Do you feel the fact that you didn't have um, a male role model to teach you anything, or did anything happen to you to make you just become extremely sexually active like that? You know, I do feel like I, I feel like. As far as my attraction to women, um, or my curios- curiosity with women, mm-hmm. when I was younger, um, it, it was like a couple different girls that kind of like, they were older, but like just kind of, would kind of fill me up sometimes. Like, it'll be like like my sister older friend, she would, um, whenever she would come over or like spend a night or something, she'll like rub up against me and just different things like, mm-hmm. And she was probably like seven years older than me. Yeah. Um, or like, you know, I had a cousin that, you know, sometimes would like try to fill me up in different things. So I'm like, maybe that's what kind of got my attraction to girls. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as like sexually, uh, I, w- I would say when I was younger, I had like different sexual experiences that I probably, not probably, I shouldn't have had. How young are we talking? Uh, it was before I was in preschool, so I would say like three, four years old, more so the age of four is what I can remember the most. Um, and I had an older sibling that, you know, was like nine years older than me and he started making what, like 12, 13 at the time. And he would, you know, like when we were home alone, like have us do different sexual things. Um, whether it was just like rubbing on each other or you said when you was two or three, uh, this was like four, about four. Yeah. And uh, and the older sibling. Yeah. So it's like, whether it was like, you know, rubbing on each other or, um, kissing, um, and you know, also oral was involved. So it's like, you know, at four years old, I'm already doing that stuff. And, um, at some point after I, I don't remember exactly when it stopped, but it did stop. Um, probably once he started messing with, you know, other girls or whatever mm-hmm. of his own age. But um, I feel like at the time I was like the experiment, you know, to try and, you know, do things with. Um, but as I got older, I think that's where my hypersexuality stemmed from because at what five six up you know i was already masturbating and you know messing with myself so um i think that's what kind of stemmed it then you know at 12 i i lost my actually lost my virginity at 12 years old and at the time he was older too he was 17 at the time and yeah i lost my virginity so i was like I think that would make you pretty, uh, you know, hypersexual, you know, as you kind of grow up and get older and, you know. It's unfortunate that so many, uh, so many women got 
experiences like this. Yeah. The stuff that didn't happen to them while they was young. Yeah. And the what's what's supposed to be the comfort of your own home. Yeah. And it's it always baffles me how many times it's actually another sibling or family member or you know what I'm saying? Like somebody that's supposed to be looking out for you. Yeah. So like did you not did you ever tell anybody about at the time, no. I didn't I didn't tell anybody until not last year, but um what we're in twenty twenty two. I would say the end of twenty twenty or the beginning of twenty twenty one is when I told my mom for the first time. Well, actually before I told my mom, I told my boyfriend at the time. And it, it really just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, what happened was I was watching the the R. Kelly documentary on Netflix. Right. And I was listening to a part, or we were listening to a part where his brother was kind of just talking about R. Kelly's experiences with his sister. Explaining like exactly what his sister did to R. Kelly. And it was like, as I was... Is I was kind of my boyfriend asked me a question like, well, what did what did his sister do to him? Because I guess he wasn't listening, and you know I like I started telling him what he did, and I was like, as I was talking, I was like, I never, I never said the words out of my own mouth what happened to me, and it was like telling his story kind of made me feel like I was telling my own story, and it was like it kind of hit me all of a sudden because I like all of a sudden I had to step out the room. Like I'm trying to talk to him and tell him I was like, and I like kind of was like, I got to leave. Well, not leave, but I went to the bathroom and all of a sudden I'm just breaking down in the bathroom because I never really, I never really dealt with it. It was like, it was something that I know happened um, that I just kind of buried in the back of my mind over the years and everything. And it was just like, Dang, why am I getting so emotional over this to where I can't even, you know, function? You know, up to the point that I had to go to the living room and I'm like sitting, I'm trying to calm myself down. So I'm just sitting like legs crossed, just like trying to breathe deep and everything just because I'm like, I'm hyperventilating at this point. I don't know what's going on. And it was like, I don't know, it was something in me that was just like, you know, you've been suppressed this all these years. Um, everything that happened to you. And it's like, you know, at some point you're going to have to deal with it. And, you know, I guess that day was that day you're going to have to deal with it. And then I went up going, end up going back to my boyfriend's room. I was like, you know, I got to go. And, you know, he didn't, he told me not to leave. So he sat me down until I got calmed down and everything. And then once I got home, you know, first thing I did was call my mom. For some reason I felt like in the moment, of me feeling how I felt and dealing with something like that it was like I felt like I needed to tell her you know because it was something that was heavy on me and I felt like you know she needed to know um and you know when I told her she she you I think it kind of caught her off guard but it was like you know she was very she was really concerned about you know why so, was I so upset and crying? So she she did. So she believed you when you told her. Yeah, she believed me when okay. I told her. Um, she was more so. She was more so upset at herself that she didn't know what was going on. Um, because there were there were times where you know, because mind you, this was before I was in school and preschool or anything. So I'm just at home until my mom gets back. And, you know, we left with my dad, but my dad wouldn't really be watching us like he's supposed to, or, you know, he'd be out and about. Right. So, you know, a lot of times it'll be me, my sister, and my brother. Um, and, you know, it'll be a lot of times where, you know, I'll, I didn't really want her to go or anything. And Cause you knew what was about to I knew what was going to happen. Or, like, I'll, you know, be waiting at the door. I know exactly what time she get off work. So I'm like... I'm at the door waiting for her to pull up and everything. Um, but, it, yeah, it's like I knew what was about to happen because a lot of times, you know, I would hide before. Um, I would hide because I know, like, you know, he was going to come looking for me because immediately after, you know, she would leave. It's like, and I'm hiding, you know, he's, you know, calling for me or, or something or looking for me. So it 
And I think that made it even worse because it's like somebody knowing that you don't want to, mm. but it's like, you know, they're going to find you and, you know, have you, I don't know, I feel like out of control. Because you're, so, you're so young at that point, it's like, what can you actually do if they, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I I would say that. And along with like other situations. Before, like, hold on, before you keep going, uh, I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm glad you was able to find a strip to finally to uh, tell somebody. Yeah. You ever, you ever thought about going to like, you know, ther- yeah, therapy or something for that? I actually have. Okay. I I just haven't yet. Um, but I think at some point I will. I honestly I feel like just talking about it to somebody and then telling my mama about it. Um, it really helped a little part of me heal um but i do feel like as far as like relationships and things like that maybe like therapy would help um too because i feel like that situation kind of like i would say sparked my relationship with men over the years because after that 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 was me at four right and then as i'm coming up like i've had um, boys my age who liked me, like saying that we're in elementary school, and they would literally get upset because I didn't like them back to where they would get physical. Um, like I had one boy, um, he sicked his dog on me. He would like call me, he every he stayed down the street, but he would call me, hey, little pussy cat, or like just weird stuff. He'd be mm. like, give me a kiss, da da da. And, you know, I wouldn't, and this was every time I came from school, whenever I saw him. Right. And I wouldn't. And this one time, you know, mm-hmm. he s- said he was going to sick my dog, his dog on me if I didn't give him a kiss. And what he, he got a pit bull. Mind you, we ain't. Right. And I know his family. So, you know, they raised their dogs to fight and be violent and mm-hmm. vicious. So it's like when he sicked his pit bull on me, yeah, I'm running because <laughs> this dog mm-hmm. coming after me. So I, I had to run all the way home and I jumped in the tree. To get away from them. So, um, luckily I made it from that. But it's like, why would you do that? Um, and then this other boy, um, he stayed next door. But uh, I was friends with his sisters. And he liked me. And because I didn't like him back or whatever, he pushed me down the stairs, brick stairs. Um, and then I had another boy when I was in elementary school. Um, he, like, his name was Lorenzo. And he liked me, but I guess his way of showing me that he liked me was mm-hmm. like, I'm just walking down the playground or whatever, and he just come up and upper gut punch me in the stomach to where I'm oh. on my knees dry heaving. A little like turning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, and I don't know, I wasn't really, I didn't really defend myself really well either back then. Like. Mm-hmm. It was like I just kind of accepted, you know, and just cried about it. And I think, like, just me dealing with boys or, you know, having that experience where I just, you know, kind of just let a man have his way with me is like, well, you know, I kind of let that fall into other interactions with men, just like when I was 12 and I let the older boy, you know, have his way with me. So, yeah. Mm. So, you talk about healing. Mm-hmm. Are you healed at this? Like, are you healed at this point, or are you still in the process of healing? I feel like <clears throat> I feel like it's still a process. I feel like it starts with recognizing where all of it came from, um, which I just started to do. Like in the last year and a half or two. Um, But I'm more so aware now as far as my interactions with men. So I think right now, this is where I'm like kind of testing. Now that I do know, I'm, I'm, I'm testing my strength when it comes to men. Okay. Like, you know, am I, am I, paying attention to like the red flags or just different things that I know is no good for me and you know or am I still gonna you know put up with it just because it's like 
I don't know, he's a guy that liked me or different things, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. Is, um, are you in contact with the, the sibling who was doing that to you back when you was um, four years old? Do y'all speak or anything like that or is um, no contact? Or? I would say it's more so cordial. Okay. Um, I'm more so, but my my brother, he's always been kind of like in the streets, kind of like not really like at home person, like you know, bonding, family time, and everything. Mm. <clears throat> so I never really. It's like when I do talk to him, it's not like I'm you know sitting down. Like you know, having a conversation with my brother or anything, but yeah, I'm in I'm in contact with them. Um, like, yeah, we're in contact to where it's more so cordial. Or if he needs something, you know, he'll reach out. But it's not like not bonding type any energy. Have you addressed him about um, the things he did and how it affected you at all? Uh, no, I haven't. I think to me I felt like just talking to my mom about it helped me enough. enough okay. Um I don't really know if I'm at the point where I want to talk to him about it. I mean I don't know. I I really don't know. I think I kind of look at it as like I do look at it sometimes like okay, I was young. And he was a kid too, but he was also old enough to, you know, know better. Right. Um, and, you know, know what he was doing, um, which was taking advantage, you know. Um, I don't know. I really don't know if I'm at that point to, like, talk to him about it. Sometimes I wonder if my mom brought it up, but I don't brought it up to him at all, but I don't think. I don't think she did because I, I don't think she kind of likes to deal with those type of situations head on um, mm. like that. Or if she did, like maybe nobody will tell me. Right. Um, It'd be like some behind the closed doors type thing. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I can't say that I won't ever talk to him about it. I feel like I feel like at some point it will come up. Mm-hmm. I just don't know when. What's the last time you seen him, like in person, like? Well, when I was um, the beginning of July, um, for Fourth of July, mm-hmm. to hang out with family out there, and he came. Okay. And do they replay? Like, is it, do it replay in your mind when you see him, or are you just? cordial about it and kind of try to block it like I would say that um I mean it always come across in my mind it always comes across since I was younger even after it happened like like does he remember what he did or does he think about what he did back Mm -hmm. then um it always kind of like run through my mind but I, I never bring it up um I don't really like awkward situations and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um but i feel like i'm coming to a point where i'm growing out of that and i'm i'm willing to have tough conversations um but i I just don't know when that happened with him but yeah it it definitely comes across my mind but i i I definitely do block it out so you got to think about like and I just, this is something I just want to say, right? Mm-hmm. You're a very brave person for coming on here and actually talking about that and speaking about that. Yeah. And because you got to think about it. You know, somebody may be watching this and it may get them the strength to tell somebody. But you said this happened to you when you was four. Mm-hmm. And you said you just told somebody at the end of 2020. Mm-hmm. So that means you didn't held on to that all that time and didn't tell nobody. Yeah. That just seems like it got to just be tearing you up on the inside to hold it in for that long and not tell nobody yeah so the fact that you finally got the strength to tell somebody and that you're talking about it now you know telling who may see this that may want to you know like i said you may give them the strength to be like let me finally say what 
I've been tripping off of or why I'm out here acting the way I'm acting. Yeah. You know, because I didn't have this experience and people just think I'm tripping. It's like, nah, this happened to me. Yeah. I just ain't told nobody. Y'all don't know about it. Yeah. You know, so that's crazy. Yeah. That. It, it definitely affects different people. I have a friend right now that I, I know her since, I want to say 2015. 2015 we worked at the movie theater together but at the time i didn't know you know she went through the same things i went through um she was actually a few years younger than me um but we were we, we were tight back then and it's like you know we still tight now and we just started talking about different things and what's crazy is we kind of have similar backgrounds and it's like okay dang we kind of came into each other's lives, you know, kind of for a reason. It's like I kind of right. help her, you know, talking to me helps her. Um, and she helps me, like, just me being able to, like, kind of talk to her about different things. And even relationships that she's going through right now because she's younger. So, I don't know. It's kind of like, it's interesting. I feel like God brought us together for a reason to kind of help heal each other. God didn't put you on the same path. He's like, she needs some healing and she needs some healing too. Yeah. Hmm. Fill out this job application oh, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get you on the same place. <laughs> now, um, as far as You feel it's pop nowadays. It seems like it's popular to be for the streets, mm-hmm. right? It seems like it's the popular option to do to be like, you know, fuck these bitches, fuck these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just get the bag. Yeah, city Look, girl mentality. It, yeah, city boys up, city, city girl. Boys, yeah, yeah, all that, right? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it's ever gonna get back to a point where? Now you, you you still got some people out there that actually believe in love and all that and they call them hopeless romantics yeah. because in See, this day and time it <laughs> it seems so very much. hopeless to actually find somebody that swerved to them and that's genuine you know what I'm saying yeah um what do you feel is the biggest reason for that me personally I feel it's the music that every I feel the, it's the music like I really it seems like love songs although people still make them. Mm-hmm. It seems like they're not as popular as it's not as mainstream no more. No, like you got if you want to go look for it, you can go look for it and find it. But everybody's so in their ego. Talk, it's like talk about it. They want to. Um, it's like the music that you know talks about get get the bag or you know fuck bitches get money and just all this. Other. Wait a minute, you looking taller than me? Let me sit up. I, I was looking at that earlier. Maybe, I was like, maybe, yeah. your, maybe your seat higher than mine. <laughs> it probably it is. She she is not taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> Got me messed up. All right, but go ahead. But it, it's like people like to listen to music nowadays that boost their ego and pump them up to be like, you know, yeah, fuck bitches, get money. Um, you know, fuck niggas, get the bag and everything. Mm. Um, and it also caters to like, um, I want to, I want to say for women, it kind of caters to like their side where it's like, well, you know, we feel like guys are going to kind of be guys anyway. And you know, they don't fuck bitches anyway. So <laughs> might as well get the money while we at it. Might as <laughs> well know? return the favor. Right. Um, and then I don't really know from the guy's standpoint where it's like, well, they just want to get money fuck bitches but no maybe they've been hurt <laughs> you know they get yeah, it's like a cycle repetitive cycle they get hurt by a woman that want to fuck niggas get money and you know not really love on them so they start hurting other women and it's like find, find a good woman and then hurt her <laughs> yeah and now she mad yeah. so now she out here like but it's, honestly it's like loyalty don't <laughs> exist no more people it does but it's rare it, it's rare but honestly it's, it's kind of hard for me to say really because i feel like back in the day they used to um shoot i mean they had love songs but you got wherever he lay his hat is his home <laughs> song too like they they was still messing around it wasn't like you know out in the open and as publicized but you know, social media social media makes everything known that, that, that's what it is yeah and that's why everybody that's why everybody's depressed because i think too many people are comparing their lives to other people because of social media mm-hmm. so now we just have a whole it's just everybody's not happy with nothing 
No. You know so you got you a great woman, but you're not happy with your great woman. You know yeah. why? Because you see a thousand Instagram models yeah. and BBLs that's just perfect because they didn't cut off anything mm -hmm. that was just, you know, yeah. relatively bad about it. You're just like, oh, Shoot, this there's is perfect. a few things I want to cut off, but I can't. Right? <laughs> I mean, Good. I could if I wanted to, but. Yo, your <laughs> man took you to Vegas. And you ain't happy with that because this this man then took his chick to over to 15 different countries in mm -hmm. 13 days yeah. and you just seen it. now you all unhappy like oh. about a gucci a prada and all this different stuff must be nice that's what that's that's what people are saying oh, must be right. nice mm, you got a gucci purse over there mm. not. you really mean but that's how I mean I think I think the music and social media definitely plays a big part into it and people like to be like oh it's just music I'll be like nah no what you feeding your mind with it it, it ends up you start reflecting it in your own life exactly I wanted yeah. to be a cash money millionaire yeah. I still want to be a cash money millionaire Birdman sign me listen mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. you cash money coming out or they you had you had like the the boys back in the day used to put aluminum foil in their mouth to make it look like they got yeah, a girl. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Should I used to do it? You know what I'm saying? Not about the boys. We all right. used to do it. So the music is a very, very big part. I don't know why people like to act. Like whatever type of music you make is cool. You know what I'm saying? I like all types of music. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand why people still can't be honest about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just be honest about it. Because people still don't listen to it anyway yeah i mean i love my uh i love love music um but i do drift over to you know yeah, I mean, sometimes you want to sometimes you want to sell bricks and get money yeah on your way to your nine to five you want, yeah <laughs> before that brief 10 minutes you was a drug dealer for 10 minutes mm -hmm. before you clocked in yeah I look like a jerk because I'd show be listening to that music too. Right. <laughs> and I, I know i don't look or sound like i be selling no bags yeah but and, and ladies and gentlemen, this is actually a entertainment podcast, but sometimes we gonna have serious discussions like this. Mm -hmm. Definitely like to thank you for coming through, telling your story. Thank you for saying having what happened. me. You know, I hope to have you back. Hope I, in the future. I can see it. You know, in the future we can do like, you know, a part two. You know, you did say you was um yeah. To, um, like I said, fast city. Yeah. It's a fun city, but it's a fast city too. You gotta be careful. Yeah, you gotta be extra careful. Yeah. Because it will swallow you. I don't want to be. Well, thank <laughs> 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 you. Mm. I'm gonna be careful, is all I'm gonna say. Good. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for having me. I enjoyed this. For sure, no problem, no yeah. problem. Um, it's part of my healing too. Yeah. Talking about it, it gets easier and easier. Mm. Yeah. Like I said, you got a whole army out there. Like you know what? I'm about to go talk right now, all because you talked. Yeah. And that's why, it's, like I said, it's very important. But you also got to talk about it when you're ready as well. Yeah. You know, people. You know, you can't have somebody force you to talk about certain issues because they be wanting you to, mm -hmm. you know, you got to, you know, when you're ready, talk about it and then try to talk about it to a person that, you know, that you can trust who mm -hmm. ain't about to take you lightly. Because mm -hmm. that's another thing too. people be taking people lightly. That's why when I, that's why when you was like, you told your mom, like, I was like, well, did she believe you? Mm -hmm. You know, because that's very, I mean, that's very important, especially mm -hmm. for the healing process. But ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank all of y'all. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on my new channel here. All right? Follow all my new pages. Tie Game Michael. Just a no game, but tie game. No game, but tie game. Podcast. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I like the way you said that. I'm going to take, mm. take you to the studio. Mm -hmm. And you remember Rick Ross had the little lady. She came on every song and she was like, Mama Mama Maybach music. Yeah. You know? Look. I'm going to have you be the no game, but tie game It's going to sound voice. sexy, too. Uh, let's see. Right. No game but tie game. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Alright, but y'all stay safe. Because the facts remain the same. There's no game but tie game.